exchange. Generally speaking, are Brazilians uh, shareholders? Yes, generally speaking, there's Brazilian shareholders, yes. Brazil is one of the countries that has of its lowest uh, savings percentage. So we're coming from a very low base uh, when you think about savings in the country. So it's not historically uh, a reality, but it's starting to become more and more. And part of the the price appreciation has this whole new flow of uh, investors that had never held a stock before that are now investing into it. The low interest rates environment that Brazil is living right now, its lowest interest rates in history, is creating a momentum of local Brazilian investors uh, starting to maintain their savings into investments, into alternative investments. So although Brazil has not been historically a a country with a large percentage of savings, it's starting to grow more and more. When you look in regards to the fund industry, locally, the fund industry, mutual funds, hedge funds in Brazil, We're talking about a $1 trillion industry. So there's a lot of capital already allocated to funds and to investments, uh, alternatives, but there's a lot more that needs to come in through savings. Before we go on to other topics, I'd like to just continue on talking about uh, the consumer class in Brazil. Is there a growing sort of consumer class in Brazil, a growing middle class? Can you sort of describe that a little bit to me? Uh, Definitely, yes. Brazil's uh, middle class uh, growth follows the same process as we've seen in other emerging market countries with the lower class individuals starting to be able to acquire products they've never acquired before. And it really, Brazil's largest growth of the middle class was from 2005, 2006, all the way to 2012, 13, where we had a very big percentage of the population emerging. So today, uh, middle class is about 55% of the population, which is a, uh, a big mass of people. We're talking about more than 110, 120 million people. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing now is a process of them developing their consumer taste, as if we if we might say. So instead of just acquiring the basic, straightforward, uh, in the beginning, food-related uh, consumer products such as TVs and electronics. Now they're evolving towards using more credit cards, using smartphones, using e-commerce. So we're seeing uh, growth in these sectors in spite of the recession. So e-commerce growth, for instance, has been double digit since 2010. So even during 2014, 2015, and 2016 were very difficult uh, economic uh, uh, years, we saw e-commerce with double digit growth. So I think there are some pockets of opportunities that are definitely related to this new consumer taste and these consumer patterns. 